We've got question two, which is a, an adjusted trial balance of healthy products, and we've been given a trial balance here, and we've been given some additional information, and what we're required to do is prepare some journal entries. So, and prepare an income statement. So that's what we're aiming to do. Um, so journal entries and income statement, these are, uh, are resulting because we need to adjust for the last part of the day, okay? So let's begin. All right, so my trial balance was prepared on the morning of 30th of June. At the close of business, the cash takings for the day were 950, which included 500 collected from accounts receivable and 450 of cash sales. Uh, for the day, the cost of the goods sold was $200. So there's important pieces of information there. I've got some 950, 500, 450, and 200. So I need to make some adjustments there to my uh, ledger. So let's um, let's start. So my general journal. Okay, and it doesn't say we need to do narration, so it's okay. I'm going to put my debits here and my credits here. So my first entry is uh, cash takings for the day. So my cash at bank. So this is all the 30th of the 6th. And we're doing uh, item number one. Just put a little up there so you know what we're talking about. And it's my cash at bank. So I'm increasing my cash by 950. And my next item is my accounts receivable. Now I'm reducing my accounts receivable. by 500 so that'll be a credit balance well accounts receivable is a debit balance here I need to reduce it so and I've got some sales so my sales is a credit account and I'm increasing it so my sales there and I'm increasing by 450 now that's the first part of that entry the second part of the entry is that I've got some cost of goods sold so I've increased my cost of goods sold so I'm going to put my cost of goods sold so my cost of goods sold account is increasing by 200 which is a debit and I'm going to be decreasing my inventory by 200 now that takes care of all items in question number one so I'll put a big line under that there now question number two says healthy products proprietary limited has a policy that the balance of allowance for doubtful debts, so this balance here, should be 5% of my closing balance of my accounts receivable. Okay, so let's have a look at the journal entries required to do that. But firstly we're going to have to do some workings out because my, I've used, I've changed my accounts receivable balance. So it's no longer 97,000. So my accounts receivable was 97,000 and I'm reducing it by 500 which is this 500 up here and we're going to multiply that by how much was it? 5% so my balance here of 5% so 5% equals now that equals well, quick calculation 96,500 by 5% will make about about will not about, it will make 4825 now that's not the balance that that's the balance that I want to be here now we've already got some amount in there so we have to now make a final adjustment to know what we have to journal so my balance should be 4825 minus 723 which will equal 4102 so that's the, this is the amount that I want in our journal. So let's go about journaling that. Okay, first things first. I need to make a what's well, called allowance for doubtful debts is a credit balance, but I have a what's called doubtful debts expense. So my doubtful debts expense. This is number two. This is on the 30th of the 6th as well. 
My doubtful debts expense needs to increase like that. Expenses are debit balances. So I'll put that under my debit side. And now I'm going to increase my allowance for doubtful debts. So just abbreviate it for doubtful debts. Is a credit balance of 4,102. So once again, that's my item number two done. Draw a line underneath it. And I can tick that one off and tick this one off. Now it says a physical stock take at the end of the day revealed that inventory on hand was 32,150. Now we've got inventory on hand of 33,176 plus this change in inventory over here. So let's do some more calculations to work out how much we have to make an adjustment to our inventory account for. So this is item number three. Inventory at the start of the day was 33,176. I sold $200 worth of inventory, which I indicated in this journal here. So minus 200 and now I'm going to work out how much adjustment do I need to put through. So I'm going to deduct this 32,150 here as well. And that equals, how much am I making an adjustment for? 976, 826 is my adjustment. So let's journal my adjustment of 826. I am, and what am I, it's 33, I'm reducing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have what's called a stock loss account. Stock loss, and my stock loss is a debit balance or an expense. And then I'm going to reduce my inventory balance by 826 as well. And that takes care of number three. Now my prepaid insurance covers six months, period commencing on the 1st of June 2011. So we're doing our accounts for the 30th of June 2011. So we need to now make an adjustment to this figure here, which is my prepaid insurance account. That's obviously six months worth. We need to make my prepaid insurance because we've used a month. So let's have a look. I'm doing one V, prepaid insurance. was 7,200, but that was for six months. So it's divided by six equals 1,200 per month. And I need to make an adjustment of 1,200 because one month has expired. So my insurance expense is a debit, is 1,200. And my prepaid insurance is also 1,200. What about number five? Oop, hang on, draw a line under. Keep consistent so we know what we're doing. Number five, interest rate on the loan is 12% per annum. Interest expense has not been recorded. So it has not, so we need to record it. Been recorded for the current financial year. So my interest calculation would be on the loan, and my loan is for $30,000. So my loan, 30000 times my interest rate of 12% equals $3,600. So I need to create an interest expense, and it said it has not been paid, or not been recorded, so it means it's not been paid. So what I've got is interest Expense, 3,600, and interest payable. Of 3,600, so I create a liability. And that takes care of my number five. Now it's saying healthy products use a straight line depreciation method for the motor vehicle, the residual value of the motor vehicle estimated to be 900 and the useful life is eight years. 
Depreciation has not been recorded for the current financial year. The motor vehicle was purchased in the 1st of December. Okay, so we're using straight line depreciation. So V1. Straight line depreciation. How am I going to go about calculating that? Straight line depreciation. I've got a motor vehicle where my motor vehicle cost was. Can we see that up on there on the screen? 96,900. So now how do I calculate straight line? Equals cost minus, what do we call it? Scrap, residual. So my cost minus my residual uh, divided by my useful life. So in this one, my cost was 96,900. My residual was going to be 900. And all divided by my eight years of life equals 12,000 per annum. So let's record the journal entry to recognize that. Uh, depreciation expense. Motor vehicle. Here's a motor vehicle, yep. Motor vehicle. Expense. Was 12,000. And my accumulated depreciation is 12,000 as well. Now there's my depreciation recorded. And my last item is item number seven. Wages expense has been incurred but not yet paid as that balance date is 3,300. Now there's no calculations to be required so I'm just going to wages expense and that's 3,300 and wages payable. Three thousand three hundred, and that's all my journal entries adjusted. Now the last thing I need to do is I need to be able to create my income statement. Create my income statement, but I've got a few more items that I need to include. So I've got all of these items here. So let's make some adjustments because my income statement is from this point down. So I need to, my sales, I've got a plus 450 in sales. My cost of goods sold is plus another 200 here. My rent expense, does my rent expense change? Uh, no, it doesn't. My prepaid insurance, oh no, my wages expense, we've got plus 3,000. Oh, no, plus 3,300. Uh, my, what have we, else have we got? Uh, wages, we've got advertising expense, I don't think we had any of that. We've got motor vehicle expenses, that doesn't, other shop expenses, that doesn't include. So now I need to include a few more expenses. Uh, I've got what's called a doubtful debts expense. And that was for 4,102. 4,102. I need to include that. I've got an inventory stock loss. I've got a stock loss expense of 826. I've got an insurance expense of 1,200. Uh, I've got depreciation expense. Twelve thousand. So I've got a few more to include there, which is a good thing. So now I can. Now I can create a income statement. So let's do that, and I'll do that on the blanks page here. So we can see all that. 
So income statement, now how do I do an income statement for healthy products for the year ended? Let's do a title first. My healthy products income statement. For year ended thirtieth of June two oh one one. First thing you put on an income statement is your income or no, we call it sales revenue in this case. So my sales revenue is 32 plus 450 is 30, 321 The next thing I need is my cost of goods sold. Goods sold. I'm just going to abbreviate that. And we've got 1313.5 plus 200. So we've got 113.700. This will give me a gross profit. Which is my sales minus my costs to give us 207, 380. And now I do less my operating expenses. Less my expenses and we'll just start with rent. My rent expense was 24000 My wages was 68000 My advertising is 8000 Should be ticking these off as I go through. My motor vehicle Expense is twenty two thousand. And my other shop is fifteen. Now but I've still got a few others. I've got my uh doubtful debts. My doubtful debts is four thousand one hundred and two. My stock loss is 826. My insurance is 1200. And my depreciation is 12,000. So, how much does all that give us? 68. Uh, yep, about there. <coughs> Two. Zero. Twenty-four. One hundred and fifty-nine. So now I'm looking for 207,380 minus 159,000 to give me what's called my net profit. Uh, that's uh, 52, 352, 52, and we've got um, 41 and 7 is 48, and that is my completion of my income statement.